welcome back and this video's topic is friction let's get started okay so friction it's a force that opposes a sliding motion and it's due to microscopic irregularities in the surfaces even in the smoothest surfaces like really smooth ice or glass there's friction friction is very useful if there was no friction, we couldn't walk, we couldn't drive our car. In fact, when the friction is low, we don't go because they cancel school. Friction is dissipative. What that means is that friction uh, takes energy from your system and turns it into thermal energy, it makes it get warmer. And if you just rub your hands together, what do you feel? How do your hands feel? Well, they feel warm because the friction has converted the motion of, or the energy of your motion into heat energy. Okay, so friction's good, friction's bad. Without friction, we couldn't do a lot of things like walk. Uh, so we have to learn to deal with friction. And we're gonna get started with that now. Now, kind of alluded to this, friction does depend upon the normal force and it's directly proportional to the normal force. If you increase the normal force, the friction increases. If you decrease the normal force, friction decreases. Several implications of this. Friction on a sloping surface is less than the friction on the flat surface. It's because the normal force is less on a sloping surface than it is on a horizontal surface. If you increase the weight of the object, the friction increases. If you weigh down a car over the drive wheels, you've increased the normal force on the drive wheels, thereby increasing the friction force. We had to do this a lot when I was growing up in Minnesota. We would add bags of sand or cinder blocks to our trunk so that there was more weight over our rear, rear tires. Let's try that again. There was more weight over our rear tires because those were the drive wheels and we didn't want those to slip then we wouldn't be able to go anywhere. Okay, so the type of friction that helps us walk, helps us drive, keeps things stuck on inclined surfaces so that they don't slide down is called static friction. It occurs between two surfaces that are not slipping relative to each other. So they're not moving relative to each other. And the static friction force uh, usually we use the subscript S to say that it's static, is less than or equal to some coefficient of friction. We call that mu. Mu S stands for the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. The inequality is important. That inequality is important because static friction between two surfaces is zero unless there is some force that's trying to make the surfaces slide or slip against each other. Static friction will increase to the force that's trying to make them slip, make the two objects slip relative to each other, until it reaches a maximum uh, force, maximum static friction force that depends upon the surfaces and is defined by the coefficient of static friction. Once that maximum static friction is reached, if you go past that, the objects start to slide and we're no longer in the regime of static friction. We've moved into the regime of kinetic friction or sliding friction. So, kinetic friction. Once the objects are moving relative to each other, we're in the regime of kinetic friction. The objects have to be sliding past each other or the surfaces have to be sliding against each other uh, for us to be in the regime of kinetic friction. Okay, so kinetic friction is equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force. Kinetic friction is usually less than static friction. I don't know of any cases where kinetic friction is greater than static friction. That just doesn't make sense. That means that once you're moving, the force is higher than it took to get it moving. It doesn't really make sense for me. 
Okay. Okay, to recap, friction opposes sliding motion. Static friction exists before sliding occurs, and it's represented by the inequality. So if you push just a little, you have a little static friction. If you push a little more, you have more static friction. If you push even harder, you have an even more static friction. If you push more than the static friction uh, can rise up to, it starts to slide, and then you're in the area of kinetic friction, sliding friction which you can see is an equality. Now, here's your multiple choice question. Welcome back. So, we're going to go through some free body diagrams of friction and horizontal forces. So here's our physics book. It's lying on a table and we have the normal force perpendicular to the surface, the weight straight down towards the center of the Earth and the book isn't moving, nobody's trying to make it move, so there is no friction. Static friction is zero. Now if we push on the box a little bit, the static friction is less than the coefficient of static friction times the normal, and the static friction is equal to the force that's applied to the book. There's no movement in the book, so the sum of the forces are equal to zero. We increased our force here. Static friction is now equal to mu s times n. It's no longer less than or equal to, or less than mu s times n. It's now equal to it. We're at our maximum. So the static friction is equal to the applied force. It's at its maximum value. If we increase the push or the pull anymore, the book is going to start to slide. Now we've increased the friction above the static friction. The book is sliding. Now we're in the region of kinetic friction. Once it's moving, we stay in kinetic friction until the object stops and re-enters static friction. Okay, so in this case, the book is going to accelerate to the right because we're now in kinetic friction. Now the kinetic friction is usually less than static friction. And that's why with just a little bit of an increase of force to get beyond static friction, the book will start to accelerate. Okay, now on a ramp. If there was no friction, that book would be sliding down the ramp because there's a component of gravity that is parallel to the ramp uh, in the downward direction. Static friction is opposing that motion. So it's parallel to the ramp and pointing up. Okay, in this case, the x component of the weight and the x component or the x axis is along the surface. So that's equal to mg sine theta. And the normal is equal to the component of the weight that is perpendicular to the surface, which is mg cosine theta. At the maximum angle before the book slides, we can prove that the coefficient of static friction is equal to the tangent of the angle. Huh. Well, that's pretty useful. If you can raise the incline until the object just starts to slide, the tangent of that angle is equal to the coefficient of friction, of static friction. Okay, so we're going to work through that. So we're going to assume, and this assumption is important, that the angle theta is the maximum angle where the book stays in place. If we raise the angle any more, the book starts to slide down the ramp. So we're at the maximum angle for static friction. Okay, our component of the uh, weights, the x component is down the plane and the y component is a perpendicular plane. The sum of the forces are zero at this point. The 
uh, x component of the the weight is equal to the static friction which is mg sine theta is equal to mu s the coefficient of static friction times the normal force which is mg cosine theta and then we rearrange we solve for mu sub s the coefficient of static friction dividing mg sine theta by mg cosine theta the mg's cancel each other out and we're left with sine over cosine which is tangent hopefully you remember that from trig so we've just shown that the coefficient of static friction is equal to the tangent of the angle when the, ang the ramp is inclined to the point where the book just slips. Okay, so here's a sample problem. We have a one kilogram book that is held stationary against the wall by pressing it with a force of 50 newtons. What must be the minimum coefficient of friction between the book and the wall such that the book does not slide down the wall? Okay, so... Okay, I'm going to draw my free body diagram. I have the weight of the book. I have the push on the book, F. Now what direction is the friction? Well, what direction is the motion going to be on the surfaces? Well, the book wants to slide straight down the wall. So that must mean that the friction is trying to hold it up, straight up. And friction, and we want it to be static because we want it to stay in place. And then there's the normal force, perpendicular to the surface. OK, so now we can sum our forces. Some of the forces in the x direction is equal to zero we don't want the book accelerating we don't want it moving it at all and that's equal to forces pointing to the right are going to be positive forces pointing to the left are going to be negative and this tells us that the normal force is equal to the force that we're pushing with or according to the problem that's equal to 50 Newtons. Now let's go ahead and sum the forces in the y direction. We don't want our book to be sliding. We don't want it to be accelerating. We want it to have an acceleration of zero. So ma equals zero. And that's equal to forces pointing up, static friction in this case, minus the weight, which is mg. So that says that the static friction must equal the weight. Well, if we remember from the equations for static friction, static friction, coefficient of static friction, is equal to, or is less than or equal to, the friction force. over the normal force. Okay, so I'm going to replace friction with mu s times n. So we have mu s times n is equal to mg. So mu s is equal to mg over the normal force, which is 50. And substituting in, we have a one kilogram book, so it's one times 9.8, and I'm going to make that 10 just so I can do the math in my head. So I'm saying g is equal to 10 for this problem over 50, which is equal to 0.2. And what are the units? Huh. Well, I don't think there are any units because this is. 10 newtons divided by 50 newtons. 
the newtons cancel out, and we have a unitless coefficient. Okay, good. Let's move on. And here you go. Here's one for you. Assume a coefficient of static friction of 1 between tires and road. What is the maximum acceleration a 2,000 kilogram car could produce? 